everyone. I'm Miriam from FunFTC, and I'm here today with Team 19434 Redstone.exe. They've already had a great start to their season, uh, being the winning alliance captain at their first qualifier, and let's find out more about how their robot works on Behind the Bot. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineered their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash first to learn more and apply. Support funds content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and fund members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support. All right, Isha, so can you please start off with talking a little bit about your drivetrain? Sure, so as a drivetrain, obviously it's the basis for all the other subsystems and it's really important that this works to its full efficiency. So at the back, if you see here, we got some vertical motors right there and right here. And these back vertical motors are really crucial in freeing up space uh, for our slides and for our linear actuator. So it's really great at giving us space. We also have three odometry pods worked in throughout the robot, and they also work to give us some really great feedback. All right, so that great. So now can you please guide us through your intake mechanism? Yeah, so our intake is based on this claw, which is on an arm, which is controlled by six servos. So uh, we use these servos to extend out 20 inches, which allows us to uh, get the claws in any spot on the, on the field uh, and uh, quickly take them back to our deposit mechanism. Um, and uh, we use this in autonomous as well to place a pixel on the spike mark to get ourselves 20 points there. Great, right. and so can you tell us a little bit like about how this works? Like I see you have like some chain there. So like does it like servo powered or like how does it move? Yeah, sure. So we, uh, for the first degree of freedom, we have two servos here, which control uh, our main part of our vertical for, our virtual four bar. And then we have another servo on the inside here, which controls the second part with a chain, uh, giving us a lot of uh, control even though the servo itself is not um, at the second four bar. And then we have a third servo, which uh, turns the claw, allowing us to uh, pick up from the stacks as well as uh, deposit it in our, uh, or transfer it to our deposit mechanism accurately. So um, we also have a turret, but we have disabled it for now as we are not uh, utilizing it. All right, great. So now you have your your pixels in your robot. So how does it work actually like getting them like onto the backdrop? Yeah, sure. So we uh, we use two sets of slides back here um, to lift our deposit mechanism uh, to the backdrop, which is angled at an angle where the touch sensor on the back over here um, gets pressed and we can and it uh, changes the angle so that uh, it is flat against the backdrop, where we then use a servo to control our gate mechanism to open this and let um, the uh, pixels fall onto the backdrop. We also have a, another servo inside, which holds a second pixel so that we can drop each of them independently and uh, don't risk mi missing the backdrop with one of them. Um, this gate design has gone under multiple changes, and recently we added a funnel so that our pixels more accurately get transferred from the intake to the outtake. Yeah, so you say it had gone through multiple iterations. So, so like what other iterations like has it gone through? Yeah, um, so our, our, our deposit first was, um, we, it didn't have as high walls and it did have a hole in the middle. Um, so we, we patched up the hole and we put higher walls and that allowed us to have more success with getting the pixels into it every time. But we uh, we have still found that they are the pixels are sometimes falling out or not going into it in, in the way that in the orientation that would be good for us to um, deposit. So we have added a funnel here as well as we are adding a taller wall to our deposit mechanism over here 
so that uh, the pixels do not fall out of the way. All right, and now can you, can you tell us a little bit about how your drone mechanism works? Yeah, so uh, our current drone mechanism, it's one of our first major iterations of our drone launcher. Uh, it's custom designed in-house and it's made, the main part is, of, is consisting of three parts, the main rail, the launcher bit, and this lid over here. So the launcher bit is what actually controls and the uh, drone here. And so what we have is the rubber band comes from the rail through these V guides to and uh, back to here. And so this allows us to reduce the tension that we have uh, on this uh, on this rubber band that uh, reduces the, uh, that increases the longevity of it. Um, in the future, we uh, plan to uh, reduce this uh, width and improve it so we can get a lot more reliable launches and flights. Right. And so yeah. looking ahead to your next qualifier, uh, what changes do you intend to make uh, mechanically? So as you can see here, one of the big changes that we are planning to make mechanically is making an all new custom drivetrain. Now, as you can see here, uh, these black plates are 3D printed carbon fiber. And this is not only going to be very lightweight, which will be useful with the hanging mechanism, which, you know, Crochet will talk about later. Uh, so it's going to be lightweight and it's also going to be much stronger. So if a robot hits it head on, it's not going to really break or it's not really going to shatter either. And so these motors, we've also upped the RPM on that. So these are 435 RPM motors, and that's really going to have us become more faster in the game. And, you know, as we've seen in this game, uh, driving is really important. Fast and accurate driving is very important. So these motors will help with that. In that same vein, we have these go rails keeping the plate together. These go rails not only serve to keep the parts of the drivetrain together, but they're also protection so that if the driver is going fast and bumps into parts of the robot, these parts of the robot will stay strong. And the go rail is really light because it's hollow in the center, keeping with that theme. Also, let me see if I can lift that here, but underneath you can see that this is belt driven and this belt drive assembly is tensioned really well and this will help us to keep us running as well. Inside, you can also see that our wheels give us a lot more ground clearance. It's about an inch and a half of clearance, meaning that we can run over pixels and we're not gonna get stuck in them either. And yeah. Mm -hmm. So while we have the robot like this, I want to talk about our odometry that we are going to use for our next robot. So since our the middle of our robot is still going to be Go Build a U channels, we're going to use a Go Build a Go Build a odometry pod in the middle, um, and our own custom odometry pods on the side plates because the Go Build a odometry pods are built specifically for these channels. This will mean that we will have to make some programming changes to accommodate the two different diameters of the the wheel radiuses wheel radii, but, uh, and, and the um, different encoders, but we will be making these changes. So uh, one more thing that we want to bring to this new robot is our hang mechanism. So currently we're building a few, we're currently working on it, but we have a few iterations. Right now we ha uh, our first iteration was a linear actuator mechanism, which we had mounted on a motor that could allow us to uh, flip it up during end game and uh, save a bit on height during the actual match. Uh, but we found that tr trying to mount it on this robot was pretty difficult. We didn't have a really good space to put it um, anywhere and which would not interfere with any place. So we decided to pivot towards a cable based mechanism over here. Uh, you can see that there's a few, uh, there's a remnants of it. Um, and we had it, uh, two cables mounted uh, on or connected to a, a very a low torque. I think it's a 43 RPM motor that allows us to have a lot of torque and lift this robot pretty easily. Um, and the way that we were going to mount that uh, or get the hook onto the uh, truss was a beam on a servo that was mounted here. And with this mechanism, hold this. This mechanism uh, would allow us to keep. Uh, we'd have a magnet here. And it would allow us to keep the hook in place during uh, the two minutes. And then when it comes to end game, we would bring it up here and this would keep it all in place. And then when we land on the truck, uh, when we hook onto the truss, it would allow us to uh, pull the mechanism out. So yeah, that's how we were planning to do it. And we hope to bring it to this uh, mechanism here. 
Yeah. And so now I'm sure just as impressively as all of your mechanical stuff is your software. So can you please walk me through that? Yeah, sure. So for software, we utilize uh, Java and Android Studio, as well as Easy Open CV and Roadrunner to effectively control our robot in both Teleop and um, Autonomous. So we have this uh, Logitech camera right here, which we use in Autonomous to detect our team prop. And as well, and we use a uh, roadrunner with the odometry concept we mentioned earlier to uh, control our robot so that we go to the same place every time and can uh, drop a pixel, park, and or drop both pixels and park uh, every time. Uh, on top of this, for our next robot, we would we are going to re be replacing the Logitech camera with a Husky Lens AI camera, which uh, will allow us to use um, to create a object recognition software, which we can use to uh, make our robot more intelligent during the uh, autonomous and teleop periods to hopefully speed up the intake and deposit of our uh, of pixels. Great. So team 194 from 4, thank you so much for your time and good luck in the rest of your season. Thank you. Thank you. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotics scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash first to learn more and apply. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Most live shows can be found on the First Updates Now YouTube channel, live competitions at twitch.tv slash firstupdatesnow, and join our Discord at discord.gg slash firstupdatesnow. Check out our social offerings on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter.